Welcome back to Relative Time. I'm Shane, and this is the Vario 1918 Medic. Which, if it happens to look a little familiar, there's a good reason for that, as I already looked at its sister watch when their Kickstarter first launched. Now, that watch was the 1918 Trench, and it wound up being one of the best, and personally, one of the more interesting field watches I've ever seen. As it's not your typical World War II style field watch, Rather, the trench takes its cues from the very first field watches from the First World War. The design is a callback to a time where form was just as important as function, and it gives the watch a slight sense of elegance over other field watches, which makes it both functional and just gorgeous to look at. Now, at the time of the Kickstarter, this medic version was an option for those that jumped into the Kickstarter, but at the time, there were no prototypes or production models to look at. Well, now that the first round of production has been complete, and they're now selling them directly from Vario, this is obviously no longer the case. So before we really jump into this one, there are a few things we need to talk about. Now, this watch was provided by Vario, they gave it to the channel, and they're not asking for it back, hence that promotional tag at the beginning. The second thing is that I got this watch a couple months ago, and I've slowly been getting footage during that entire time which was done on purpose as I wanted to show off the watch in its various stages of patina. So you will see some shots where it's nice and shiny versus some shots where it does look a little duller. And lastly, this review is part of a dual premiere I'm doing with Dave from Just The Watch. We've done a couple of these before and we always try to do them when we can. I believe Dave got a stainless steel cased version with a white dial, where this is brass with a cream colored dial. So if you haven't checked out his review already, make sure you go do it after this. Now, that said, let's just get to it, and let's first start off talking about the specs. For this version, Vario went with a 40mm wide case, as well as a lug to lug of 47. The Medic is also 12.5mm thick, and that is from the engraved case back all the way to the top of the double dome sapphire with AR. And I think that 12.5mm isn't bad, and especially when you look at it from this angle. As you can see, the gentle slope and peak of that crystal as it just sits on top, and it kind of has this ethereal look to it here, as it's just barely there. Now, rounding out the specs, you also have 100 meters of water resistance, a weight of about 80 grams depending on the strap, as well as the Seiko NH38 movement. Comparing this watch to the Trench, I think it's easy to see that they have a very similar feel, but there are definitely some differences here as well. For one, the Trench comes in two sizes. You have an option for 37 and an option for 40 whereas the Medic only comes in 40 millimeters. The Trench also has a small second, while the Medic is a three-hander. And of course, the Medic also has a pulsometer that sits at the very edge of the dial. And that pulsometer is kind of the whole point of the design. Where I could really see the Trench being used by a field officer back in World War I, the Medic is, well, for a Medic, as a pulsometer is designed to help read a person's heart rate. You also only have a couple of options when it comes to colorways. Beyond that, however, the watches are about the same. They both include an enamel dial, as well as both having the same great strap options. And of course, they both have the same gorgeous retro case, which is really very minimal and very classic looking. Basically a circular frame with fixed wired lugs coming out at each side. It's a very simple and straightforward case, but there is a beauty to the simplicity here. The case itself has a very smooth circular brushing that further highlights its curvy nature, while the clean bezel that sits on top is polished, which creates a nice contrast between the two and just draws your eyes right to the crystal and the dial. One of the things I love about this case is the uniform curvature to it, and this is also something you see from the side, as the crystal, bezel, and case just continue the same gentle slope. Now, moving to the lower right, we have a smaller onion-shaped crown which I think looks fantastic here, and is really keeping with the vintage theme. The crown is also signed and screwed down, which may not be necessary, but is nice to go along with 100 meters of water resistance. Then, moving to the back, we have a stainless steel case back with a light engraving that's commemorating the soldiers and the end of the First World War. Overall, the case is beautifully done. I really love the way the stainless steel trench looked, but I gotta say, I think this looks even better in brass as it really looks something that could be from that era, and especially after it's developed a little bit of patina. But let's move on to the dial, which is where things get a bit more interesting, as well as a bit more complex, at least compared to the trench version. 
This is the cream colorway. So this dial has an off-white coloring to it with just a hint of yellow. It's a gorgeous dial with a fantastic sheen and texture, which only an enamel dial could have. Now the white dial also has white indices, but this version has dark orange colored Arabics that surround the inner track. And when paired with this cream dial and the black highlights, I think it looks great. However, there is a trade-off here to that orange colored loom, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Surrounding the Arabics, you have a classic train track chapter ring, which is something I'm always a sucker for. And that's right before you get to the pulsometer. The pulsometer is something you don't see very often. It's kind of a relic from the past, and it kind of operates like a tachometer. But this is something that was put on watches that are aimed towards, say, medics and physicians than, say, race car drivers. To use it, you basically wait till the second hand hits the 12 and then count 30 heartbeats. After that, wherever the second hand sits is basically their heart rate. Reading the numbers can be a challenge because they are a little small, but I think the red really helps them pop out. I think this is kind of a cool callback to a bygone era. And in some ways, this would make much more sense on a chronograph, just like a tachometer. But at the same time, I mean, realistically, I don't think anyone's going to use this today. Just like a professional diver has a dive computer, today's physicians and nurses have other tools to do this faster and easier. So while it is still very functional, it's going to be mostly decorative. But I don't think that means that people can't appreciate it for what it is or the history behind it, and especially those who may be in the medical field as this is one of the very few watches out there that are really meant for them. Zooming in and checking out these macro shots, you can see a few hiccups on the dial, and specifically at the 5 and 8 indices, which is kind of disappointing. But like I said, you don't really notice this in person, and the rest of the dial does look fantastic, especially the hands. I've always loved cathedral style hands, and these look exceptionally good and especially with the black outlined and the orange colored loom. It just really pops, has a lot of contrast, and just draws your eyes right towards them. Although one thing that I did notice is that I think Varu is using the same set of hands for both the 37 and the 40 millimeter versions. And I think when you look at the trench, the hour and minute hand look way too small in proportion. However, for the medic version, I think this actually works. Since the Arabics are moved in further, everything looks more in proportion. The hour hand goes straight to the Arabics, while the minute hand goes right to the chapter ring, leaving the second hand to go even further into the pulsometer reading. It works, and I think it actually looks good here, as well as adding some functionality, because it kind of separates out the timekeeping elements from the pulsometer. So I'm not really sure that was planned, but it does look good. But let's move to the center of the dial, and here you do have the Vario logo which is something I nitpicked on the trench, and I gotta nitpick it here just for consistency. Generally, I like Vario's logo, and I think you should always keep your brand consistent, but the logo has sort of this 50s sci-fi feel to it, and that kind of clashes with the World War I motif. Not sure what they could do about it, but it is something I think you'll notice. Then, shifting your eyes downward, just above the six, you have the Caduceus, which is a symbol that has been used for the Army Medical Corps, or at the very least, the U.S. Medical Corps. Now, Vario has mentioned that a few people have commented that this isn't the proper symbol to use here. Or rather, they say the more proper symbol should be the Rod of Asclepius. Now, you guys know I like to nitpick things here and there, but to me, this is kind of extreme nitpicking. I started looking into this to see kind of what's proper because they did mention it. Basically, it's long, confusing, and it'll just bore the hell out of you. So if you're curious, look into it, but for me, I'm good with it the way it is, as I think the important thing is that a good chunk of the people around the world will recognize this as being something medical. But even more important than that is that I think the watch looks good as it is. The design has this very vintage feel to it, which is then even further enhanced with the brass case. It's not quite as simple or as clean as the trench version, but the Medic has its very own distinct character, one that I think loses a little bit of elegance, but replaces that with a little bit of a tool watch feel. It's really a gorgeous watch, and one that I think will especially appeal to those who have a connection to the medical field. Some people might wish that this was also offered in a 37, but I think 40 is the way to go here. This dial would look way too crowded if they condensed it any further, and you'd need a magnifying glass just to read the red numbers. 
But let's move on to the loom. And unfortunately, this is where we have an issue, which is all thanks to the orange colored loom. Now, while that loom may look good during the day, it pretty much goes to bed shortly after sunset. Kind of like you'd expect a real 100 year old to. Anyway, you can kind of see it here. It looks great for a brief period of time and then just nods off while watching Jeopardy. Although I think it is worth pointing out that the white dowel version may be better. And that's just one more reason to check out Day's review after this. So as far as the movement, we have a Seiko NH38, which is basically a dateless version of the NH35. So it's pretty much your standard workhorse movement. And at this price, it might be kind of on the high end for that, but we'll talk about that in a minute. It's also worth pointing out that for those who hate ghost dates, Vario did use the proper movement here, and I think they should get a little bit of credit for that. So let's talk straps, and with the 1918 line, you have two options. And both of those have a variety of colors to pick from. The first, and I think the more interesting choice, is a great bund leather strap, which I believe is made with Crazy Horse leather. It's simply gorgeous to look at, and it is extremely well made. And one interesting aspect of this bun strap is that you can actually take that center bun piece off and kind of use it as a standard two piece. So just for its uniqueness, this might be the one to get. Although as good as this strap looks, it may not be the most comfortable throughout the entire year. As you do have that larger bun leather backing, and it's not really ideal for hot and sweaty summer weather. In the fall and winter, however, it's a whole other story. The Bund is a very cool and very interesting option, but also be aware that it's not very long. So I think if you have a larger wrist, maybe like seven and a half or above, it's going to be too small for you. And at that point, you're probably better off going with the second option, which is this great simple and thin leather single pass. Now, once again, Vara uses a great piece of leather which gives the watch just a really good quality feel on the wrist. And do notice that both of these straps do come with brass hardware if you get the brass case. Overall, this is a great strap, but once again, maybe not the best choice for summer weather. I actually wound up wearing this on another strap from Vario. Now, this is one of their ballistic nylon single passes, and again, notice the brass hardware. This strap doesn't come with the watch and it would be extra, but I really like this one and I'd easily recommend it. And I think this army green really added to that slight tool watch vibe with the medic version. But either way, on the wrist, this watch feels fantastic. The bun strap might take a little bit to break in, but with the other two, it has a nice light feel to it, as well as just this fantastic presence. Now, in terms of value, you're looking at a current pre-order price of about 328. And I think they've said if you order in September that you should be able to get the watch by October. For some, I think this is starting to get on the high side for where they like to see a standard Seiko movement. But considering everything you're getting here, I think it's overall pretty fair. Especially because there's nothing else quite like it out there, as well as the enamel dial, which is something you don't see that often. One of the big things I love about Vario watches is that they really are a complete package. With this particular one, you have a great case paired with a beautiful dial. And that's really shown off by a double dome sapphire crystal plus a really good leather strap. Vari was very meticulous with their details, and they just don't throw in any cheap strap. So anything they send you is gonna be something that you really wanna use. Now, personally, I do prefer the Trench over the Medic. I think the Trench is a gorgeous watch that's gonna be more versatile most of the time for most people. However, while I think it's the more versatile watch, I think the Medic is by far the more interesting choice especially for those that have a connection to the field of medicine, whether you're actually a medic or an EMT, paramedic, nurse, physician, or maybe even a spouse of one of those. I think this is a watch you really could appreciate. Either way, whether it's the medic or the trench, bottom line, this is a fantastic watch that I would easily recommend to anyone. However, if you haven't already seen Dave's take on this, go check it out. It never hurts to get a second opinion, or third or fourth. I mean, this is YouTube and the videos are free, so you might as well. Well, that about wraps it up. Now, before you check out Dave's review, make sure you let me know down below what you think about the 1918 Medic, as well as if you can think of a watch that's similar that I don't happen to know about. And as always, you guys know what to do down below. I'm Shane. This is Relative Time. See you next time.